All right, seeing that it is after seven o'clock, I'll, I'll call the meeting to order. I'm sure Tom will join us. I'm keeping an eye as well, just to see if he joins as an attendee first. Um, but anyways, but we'll call the meeting to order. Evening, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, the first item on the agenda is really administrative approval of meeting minutes. Um, and again, Paul, thank you for doing the June 6th meeting minutes. Um, and and we do have three sets of meeting minutes, so maybe we'll just take them uh, one at a time. Um, and thank you for those that responded. Um, so I think we had a couple of um, agendas posted. One was for a joint CPC, Affordable Housing Task Force, or Trust Fund meeting, which we didn't have a quorum for. So I'll get back to Kate on that. And that was the same thing, I think, on June 18th as well. Uh, Dorian had posted an agenda, um, but I don't believe we had a quorum on that one either. So, but anyways, but maybe we'll just take them one at a time um, and just, you know, maybe start first with the June 6th one to see if anyone had comments on those meeting minutes. I'll move that uh, we Shopsy accept the meeting minutes from June 6, 2024. Second. Okay, great. Um, do a uh, quick roll call on that. Sorry, I'm just taking notes at the same time. So, um, all right, so all in favor, Paul? Aye. Jesse? Aye. Al? Aye. Um, and Doug is I as well. So those meeting minutes passed. All right, we'll go to July 11th. Yeah, moved. Uh, so we accept the July 11, 2024 minutes. Second. Okay, awesome. Uh, all I in had, favor, Paul? I had one minor correction on that. Oh, sorry. Okay, hold on. Let me sorry, up. I should have had this ahead of time, but um, I think it says that I was nominated for, for chair when it was actually vice chair because you Oh, yep, correct. Good, good catch. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I will correct that right now. Okay. Try to, I'm trying to sneak that. Oh, oh, I was trying to sneak that one in there. Yeah, that was oh. nice try there, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice try. <laughs> uh, it does I'll move the right. amend, amended minutes. <laughs> uh, do I have a second for that? Second. Okay. All in favor, Paul. Hi. <laughs> Jesse? Aye. And Al? Aye. All right. Thank you. And then the next one. Oh, hold on. Let me get back to my notes. Yeah, I'll move. Uh, do we accept the July 23rd minutes? Okay, great. Second. A second. Okay. Second. All right. Seconded by Paul. All in favor, Paul? Aye. Uh, Jesse? Aye. An hour. Aye. All right, great. Thank you, guys. So I'll I made that one correction. I'll get all these over to Kate uh, and get them done. And then um, and I am working on meeting minutes for our last uh, uh, meeting. I'll do this one as well. Um, so, but thank you guys for that. Um, so next, uh, so for new business, first item um, was discussion of the MBTA Communities Act. Um, so Jesse, I might turn this over to you first. I think you asked to add this to the agenda, so we'll turn it over to you Thank for you. an update. Sure. Uh, so per state law, uh, the planning board is holding public hearings to advance uh, for special town meeting on uh, September. I believe it's the 30th. 30th. Thank you. Um, for a uh, warrant article, I think it's number five or six. I can't remember. But it's going to be uh, to, to change zoning in the town of Southboro. Uh, we're going to have uh, an excess of uh, 50 acres with buy right, um, higher density um, multifamily housing. Uh, 10 of those acres, at least, I think it's a total, is actually going to be 13 uh, and change within. Um, approximately a half mile radius. I say approximately because we were able to move um, the lots, two of the lots, um, a little bit more east uh, because of the, uh, you know, the ideal nature of the, uh, some commercial lots that are um, 
kind of ready for building on the south side. Um, so uh, there's been a considerable concern, obviously, by impacted residents within the district. Um, we've done our best, uh, the planning board has, to, um, you know, find the compromise basically between meeting the state law and uh, looking out for the best interest of uh, the residents currently within the half mile district, um, as well as the town at large. Um, we've had very extensive uh, mapping sessions, uh, analysis of uh, all the parcels in town, and we've arrived um, at what we feel is a, uh, um, a reasonable map, a reasonable compromise again. And um, there is that affordable housing component, which is why I thought it would be good for Shopsy to uh, consider <clears throat> Um, voting to support uh, because 10% of the units are going to be deed restricted affordable. Jesse, I, I didn't catch the last couple of meetings. I caught the first one probably back in, I think it was July or August. One of the, I think it was August, the one of the first hearings that you guys had on. I think you've had three so far. Um, I had a quick question. This was more down related to the parcels within the half mile, I think it was like 1A and 1B. Um, but I was more curious because I have not been following this as closely, but can you give the background on, you know, so the, the you know, the dirt parking lot, the Fitzgerald site, you know, general store, and then the kind of the McCarthy's pool site, you know, have, you know, have not, I mean, I'm sure they've been considered, but I'm curious the background of those parcels where they were considered versus the one now that's up on, I think it's off of Woodland, but there's like two larger residential parcels that are being designated that have a lot of single family home abutters. But I was just curious the background, if there's any background on that. Yeah. So the background is um, multiple mapping sessions mm -hmm. where we had residents come to the senior center and effectively went with their consensus on which parcels um, that were compliant because it, the way that this works is of the 10 acres you, you, the most um, non-contiguous is five acres does that make sense mm -hmm. and you can have within uh, the contiguous um, areas non-eligible so for example you mentioned fitzgerald's i believe that there was a historical component to that site that made it ineligible um so open space wet you know um there was there's there's different uh criteria on which things are ineligible in effect for mbta communities but they can be included in order to make the areas contiguous. And you have to have a minimum of 10 acres total be. Um, so long way of answering your question that we just went through um, a, a number of different exercises and um, it really was a compromise between the, the consensus of the residents in the area and what's gonna work to meet the bylaw, to meet the law. Yeah, no, that's helpful. I was just I was more curious because the the areas designated not so much the one on um, Southville Road, right? Because I get that one. That's where the lower industrial buildings are. You know, toward going towards Ashland, that's the long stretch that you guys put together. I was more curious because the other area was you know literally in the middle of a lot of single family homes, and so that was the one that was you know I was but again I've been in the process. I was just curious. So yeah, um, that's a fair. I mean, there's a lot of. <laughs> You can imagine that we, we've had, uh, like Mr. Heavey has uh, been advocating uh, vociferously for his uh, parcel to be included, um, but uh, it doesn't meet the, the qualifications of our rubric, which is, you know, um, accessibility to the T and uh, walkability, um, you know, how much clear cutting would have to happen. Uh, but also the map that we had wasn't just that we had mapping sessions, Doug, for the half mile radius. We had mapping sessions for the whole yeah. town. Yep. 
Okay, so no, I appreciate it. I just was there's a lot of background. consensus by residents on that stuff too. Yep. Yeah. It isn't I, perfect. I, I, I'll be the first one to say this is far from, I mean, this, this is not perfect, but <clears throat> we're trying to, we're trying to kind of, you know, <clears throat> we're trying to kind of thread a needle here legislatively. Well, I no, think I would you've been heavily appreciate, involved. Appreciate the planning board. So go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Al. Yeah, no, I think you've been heavily involved in the sausage making, and I think you guys have actually done a pretty good job. Well, Al, as you know, it's very difficult to please everybody all the time, especially oh, <laughs> when it, the it, state... it, impossible would be the, the, the correct term. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. This is like a classic case of, you know, the, the um, what's the, you can probably put it better than me. You mean the select board yeah. is always faced with these kinds of situations where you're not going to have everybody, you know, satisfied. Yeah. But this is I'm, a real I'm, I'm ever so pleased that you guys are responsible for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, I think my high level comment, look, I mean, you guys have heard this before. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I think, you know, it's, we're not the only community that needs to comply with this, right? We clearly have a commuter rail station. Um, you know, <clears throat> um, I think Southboro has to do its its part, you know, and, and Jesse, kudos to you and the planning board for trying to navigate this because you're absolutely right. It's there's it's never going to be a perfect solution, you know, for everyone. Um, but, you know, we're, we are in the middle of a housing crisis and this does add, you know, it does have a 10 percent affordable requirement, which is the maximum, which is great that that's being included. Um you know, so um, looking forward to town meeting to see how it goes. But I definitely feel like town of Southboro should comply versus other towns like Milton who have taken a different path. And, um, you know, and then I think you guys have looked at it appropriately. So, you know, my well, the, and are... I'm glad you mentioned Milton. You know, I feel like a, a community like that is leaving itself open to uh, a, an adverse outcome, ultimately. Now, yeah. I don't know that for a fact. I don't have a crystal ball, but I could easily see a developer um, litigating to go, you know, far beyond the underlying zoning. And this is a way to, you know, to have some protection and some control. No, and I think it's better, it's better to be our choice, the, the town's choice versus not trying to comply and the state comes back and does something on their own like they've done with other new uses in the, you know, zoning bylaw, right? So um, I definitely think it's much more fraught with peril. So anyways, sorry, Paul, go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree with your earlier comments, Doug. It, um, I mean, this is, I think, an imperfect solution to a real problem, that being housing in the, in the state. Um, and I, and I think the planning board, you know, like you said, Jesse, it's, it's not a perfect plan, but it's it's pretty good. Um, I would have, the, the one that I kind of objected to was the one that's on the Northboro line, or the Marlboro line, rather, which from my understanding is probably never going to be anything built there. Because because to me, beyond the 10% that's deemed affordable, I mean, really, almost anything built under this is probably going to be affordable as far as Southboro goes, you know, as compared to everything else in Southboro. I mean, so. yeah, it might. And I, I agree with, you know, Doug, you mentioned um, a lot that it seems intuitively to a developer to make more sense than some of the other areas. Paul, you, you meant you're bringing up another good example of something that you could make an argument should have been included. We have a large contingency of um, voters um, who would, you know, their druthers is to go completely, you know, in in defiance, so to speak. So yeah, we're, that's a horrifically is, bad idea. I agree with I agree with what you're saying, of course, but yeah, we're trying to get something done. And yeah, and I'm I think Shopsy should be you know in support of this, um, as imperfect as it may be, because we are in a crisis and we you know we need more more how more housing and especially more affordable housing. So yeah. The old adage is, you know, the perfect is the enemy of the good. And right. um, so uh, I'll make a motion that Shopsy support the planning board plan for the MBTA Communities Act. Second. Okay. Um, if no, just I think that was the discussion. So what I'll do is call a roll call. So um, all those in favor, Paul? Aye. Jesse? Aye. Al? 
I. And I am I as well. Um, so um, great, that passes. Um, Jesse, good luck in the continued effort. Um, and um, yeah, hope everybody can attend uh, Monday. Understand yep. if you have other stuff to do, but it's a joint meeting with Select and Advisory on this issue. Thank you. Yeah, John. I'm yeah I'm planning on being there, Jesse, on Monday. And if if there are one more of us, I will, you know, just reference that we will call the meeting to orders because we will have a quorum. Um, so if more than two of us are there, I'm a threat to go too. So you might as well post it. So yeah, yep. yeah, I think it's already posted for the. I think Monday. I'll double check, but I believe it's already posted. Um, if I'm there, so, it'll be as as a member of the select board. But I guess I can double dip. Yep. <laughs> Um, okay. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is discussion of potential future approach to chapter 61, a parcels. So I will open it up. This is one of the agenda items that we put on for tonight. I don't know if anyone has any initial thoughts. Uh, I do actually. And it, it, you know, um, So, you know, we looked at the Northboro Road, which I can't really participate in because um, I have a family member who is in a butter. But I think that the challenge with almost any 61A parcel is that it's going to be large enough that it's going to have substantial value. You know, right now, the ballpark number that I'm using and seeing in the marketplace is $300,000 for a developable acre. And if you need, this is the, the I, I, I'm beating my head against the wall on, on this. Uh, so if um, if you want to build something of, you know, on the 30 unit sort of scale, I think you need four acres. Jesse, you know this better than I do, but I don't think four acres is a crazy number. Um, you know, between the parking and septic and the footprint of whatever building and green space. And so, you know, all of a sudden you're at $1.2 million just to acquire the land. Because you're going to, you know, if you're talking about a 61A conversion, you're sort of dealing with, you know, the market. I, and... Um, if you look at the available resources, and again, I'm mostly uh, it would be the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. The um, you know currently there's about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the trust fund, and there's another five hundred and forty some odd thousand sitting in CPC that we we'd like to move into the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. So that's a million dollars, more or less. And uh, I think that some of the existing monies are going to get committed in the foreseeable future. So um, I, I struggle with this one. You know, I think that, you know, it, it would be nice, but at a, at a million two, just for four acres of land, and then, you know, whatever you're going to have to chip in to, um, do as part of the construction costs you know it, it seems like a number that is unless we can raise other sources of funding is a number that doesn't work what may, might make more sense in my my perspective is to work with some of the existing uh 40b developers and see if we could buy down the rental rates uh uh, on the affordable units, that might be a more uh, productive use of, of funds. But again, you know, I'm all ears. If somebody's got a better idea or 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 different thoughts about how to, I had a thought that came from the um... how to skin that cat. Yeah, I had a thought that came from that mass housing workshop thing that I attended back in June. I think and they talked about community land trusts. <laughs> where it involves land that's, that's governed by the community, for the community. They can buy land, building home, buildings or homes, and take them off the market permanently you know, to use for whatever reason meets a community priority, including housing. <clears throat> so 
I mean, it seems like, as Al just um, explained, we, we got a, a funding problem here. And and one of the, the avenues that these folks talked about was, was people donating. Well, in this case, it was land, but I don't see why it couldn't be money. <clears throat> So if you got people who live in South Peru, you know, they're well-to-do, maybe they grew up here, they've been here a long time, it's a way for them to give back to the community for something that's going to live in perpetuity. <clears throat> so, and I, I think Sam Stivers might have wrote an idea similar to this a while back, but I mean, I think it's worth sort of pursuing <clears throat> and just, you know, I don't know exactly what the avenue would be, but approaching certain people would be in this target demographic and see if it's something they're interested in. Yeah, I would just add to that also that um, partner in partnering up with, uh, you know, Southborough Open Land Foundation, uh, the Open Space Commission. Uh, I mean, the, the open space preservation is a huge part of uh, the 61A um, interest. So, I don't think it's just affordable housing. I think it's I think it would be a partnership with other yeah. you know, affordable housing combined with open space preservation. Yeah, um, might have a little bit more um, power <laughs> in terms of rate fundraising. Yeah, so I I definitely agree. I mean, and again, I think you know when the Northborough Road parcels came up, we were trying to schedule you know kind of a joint meeting to discuss. Um, I think one thing we can probably find out from the town assessor. We could probably find out and have mapped pretty easily all the 61A parcels that actually exist in town. I mean, part of this was we were caught flat footed, right? You know, um, because when it comes up, it comes up quick, right? Because they they already are selling the parcel and then there's a short shot clock. But it could be interesting to find out what other 61A parcels are out there, because I don't know if there'd be that many, but it's more just it's good information to know and it's publicly available. Um, oh, yeah. But Paul, but, Paul, Paul knows the town backwards and forwards. And he knows what, what each of our properties is worth. And um, and uh, we, we should do that. I, I, I'm hesitant because there are things I'm not supposed to talk about. No. And uh, well, yeah, yeah. I, you know, hopefully soon you got uh, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. But uh, yeah. uh, so, but there yeah, are other opportunities to acquire land. Well, the reason why I bring it up, too, is that, you know, we might be surprised what are the 61A parcels. But, Paul, going back to your <clears> point, <throat> it might be more of a targeted acquisition. Right. You know, so if there is an interesting parcel that could be, again, Jesse, to your point, open space, affordable housing something that's real, that there could be a real fundraising effort around that too, as well, as opposed to unrestrict. I mean, so anyway, it's just something to think about, but I think at least for knowledge on this, um, I do agree with Al that it is challenging because again, you know, any kind of acquisition is probably north of a million, right? Type of thing. Um, so, but it might just be good to understand, you know, and also just at least, you know, for this committee, not to necessarily spin wheels and waste time, because if all the 61A parcels are larger, former you know, farmland type things, they might all be very large parcels, which might be very challenging, right? But it'd just be good to know, I think for information purposes, at least. So one, th yeah, I agree. Let's, 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 let's get the map. I, I, I'm happy to, I see Paul on a regular basis. I'll, I'll ask him to point okay. those out. Great. Um, you know, uh, actually one thing we can, I can talk about is, you know, we, we have looked at the Atwood property, which is about two acres. And we did approach one of the neighbors about acquiring who owned three acres that abut it that is landlocked. And you know, we did approach them and you know, we've got a problem on the Atwood prop property at the moment in that, that there's lead contamination, but uh, that's going to get dealt with one way or the other. And so that could be a potential site for, you know, I, I think in that neighborhood, you'd probably want to do something like duplexes rather than, you know, a, a a really uh, big development, but um, uh, I don't think that's necessarily dead. In fact, I, you know, uh, I think once we resolve what we're going to do about the lead situation, you know, that that might be an opportunity to reinvigorate that discussion. 
I will say one thing. We talked about this before. I am a, a bigger fan of townhomes, right? Or lower density, right? I mean, that's also yeah. much needed affordable housing um, as well. <clears throat> um, so especially with the chapter 40B projects, we are going to get, you know, uh, you know, I wouldn't say a lot, but a good number of affordable flat type apartments, right? So diversity of housing yep. type on the affordable side is a good thing too as well. Yeah, we do not have a lot of duplex. We have some, but we don't have a lot of duplex type things. And and I think those would fit in that neighborhood pretty well. Yep. Obviously, you know, nobody ever wants development to happen in their neighborhood. As I'm sure Jesse is well painfully aware, but yeah, uh, I, I think although I did hear a new term today, uh, I was on a, a work meeting with some people in Texas where they have yimbies. Yes, in my yes. back. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I saw an I, article in the Globe that said that this is a term I had never heard before today. So, not everybody, <laughs> not all areas are like Eastern Massachusetts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I've heard that as well. I think also too, and I know that this is what can be done in chapter 40B projects. I mean, we can do a 70% preference for town residents and town employees. Uh, again, that's just part of, you know, the selling point. Hopefully, I mean, no one, you know, everyone's, you know, potentially could be opposed to something close to their backyard, but this can be geared to really help existing residents or town employees. Right. Um, so that, that I think is an important point too, as well, just as a speaking point. Yeah. What'd you say that figure was, Doug? 70%? 70%. Yeah. I don't know if it's changed, but you know, when I did chapter 40B projects probably 10 plus years ago, um, it was just, you know, it's it's a it's the threshold DHCD allows, which is up to 70%. And it basically means in the initial lottery and even in the renewals, right? Or if it, it becomes vacant, um, you can basically establish a bucket that, you know, 70% of the units go into a lottery first for just town residents or town employees. And it's up to the <laughs> town. They could. They could just state town residents, but again, it's it's good to do both because again, obviously living in Southboro is extremely expensive. So the opportunity for, you know, police, fire, or teachers being able to, or even, you know, workers in the, the town that they can actually live, especially when they're younger, right? Just starting out families. So um it's a it's a good, it's a good local preference to have. And I believe you can do that in affordable housing projects separate of chapter 40 B2 as well. Yeah. Yeah, we have, we have a, actually a, a substantial challenge in that, you know, as each of us has opened our property tax bills, they've been rising quite nicely. And, you know, we have a significant and growing senior population that live in, in houses like the one I live in, which has got three empty bedrooms. And, um, you know, at some point, those folks will want to move to some place where they don't have to mow the lawn and shovel the, the the driveway, but it may not may not be ready for assisted living. Yep. And you know, uh, so there is a, a crying need. The, the only way we're going to get out of the housing crisis is by building housing. All right. So it seems on this uh, option item, um, Al, you're going to follow up with Paul to kind of yep. get a list of 61A parcels and. Um, and then I think we should obviously continue this discussion, you know, further. Um, um, but maybe I'll move on. Any, anything else on this one? If not, I'll move on to the next one. Um, so the next item is discussion opportunities to reduce zoning barriers to affordable housing, particularly senior housing. Um, I think this is one of the ones that Tom had brought up. I, I know Tom's not on the list, but I do think, and Jesse, you might know this, I think currently in the zoning bylaw, there's a cap on senior housing, right? I think there's also That's a true. cap on ADUs as well, though I, I don't, well, now with the passage of that new law, that might not be relevant, but I'm curious what your thoughts or background, you might have some better knowledge well, on this since it's not on. Okay, well, on the ADU thing, I mean, I've been an uh, advocate of uh, opening up for ADUs, having to go in front of the ZBA for uh, a special permit, um, not optimal. <clears throat> what, what is an ADU? Oh, uh, sorry. So uh, I'll commonly referred to as an in-law unit or uh, okay. it's ADU stands for accessory dwelling unit. Gotcha. <clears throat> so these are deeded single family homes. In fact, that's going to be discussed some, uh, somewhat on Monday is um, not to go back to the other agenda, but it is part of the MBTA thing because um, there's some confusion um, 
with one of the other boards. I can't remember which one. They're, they're, they had a representative email Karina Quinn and say that, you know, these should be recognized as multifamilies. But in point of fact, the whole point is it's a deeded single family with an accessory, quote unquote, unit. So um, it's not a two family. It's, it's a single family residence with an accessory unit. So yeah. Yeah. that that historically has been something that's been very difficult to get done in Southboro. So um, always as a planning board member, I'm always looking for ways, you know, opportunities to advance that, uh, open that up in the town code. Um, sorry, Doug, what was the other thing? Well, so the other one was the cap on senior housing. And I oh, think right. Tom, yeah, Tom's perspective is, you know, why is there a cap? And, you know, going back to what Al just said, too, you know, it'd be great to have more senior housing in town, not less. Um, well, the cap is 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 to get a special permit um, under um, major residential development. So you get in exchange for uh, increased density, uh, you know, it's, it's an incentive for a developer. But we like you to your point. Um, you have two paths. You can go to affordable or senior, and um, it's different deed restrictions. Uh, and if you go with the senior path, there is a cap on the number um, in town. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, and I think Tom was talking about, and just this question, I guess, for you, and you know, not to put words into Tom's mouth because he's not here. We can always you know, talk about this in the next agenda. Jesse, do you think there's any thoughts of removing the cap or increasing the cap on the senior housing number of units? Because again, I, I, there's I would tend cap. to agree. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, that's something that could be changed in a future town meeting. Again, I think, you know, as Tom was saying, I think we're all trying to figure out, you know, what are the zoning barriers? Um, now, obviously, the state, I think, has taken the ADU one and, you know, kind of come over the top, right? So that's kind of already addressing that. Um, but the senior housing. What is the stat? What is the status of the state? So I think so. I know it was passed on July thirty first as part of the housing bond bill. Um, but you know, beyond that, Jesse, I'm actually curious if you know anything. Because again, at this point, I know the bill has been passed. Um, so it does allow, like, there's going to be increased allowance of ADUs in towns. But I don't know how it's going to get implemented or how it actually flows through the town. Because right. I'm assuming it's got to be integrate it into you know you know is planning board doing it how does it get integrated and there were some parameters or flexibility on how it got integrated too but i i can't i can't tell you much more now all i know is that it was passed it's not imminent the, doug i can tell you that for sure yeah it's gonna it's much more expedient if we just do it ourselves okay because that's the other thing jesse right now there's a cap on number of adus as well right so that's been hit too as well correct or or was it more just restricted to certain areas of town? I'm trying to, th again, this is where Tom is much more knowledgeable on it than so, I am. So, okay, now you raise a good point. We did pass last uh, town meeting, or the town meeting before last, the uh, downtown district. Are you familiar with that, Doug? No. There is some by right, yeah. there's some by right multifamily housing and, and, and by right ADUs within the downtown district, so. Um, my point being, there is some movement, not not quite enough, but we're heading in the right direction. Yeah. So I guess, you know, the comment would be, and again, we can wait to the next meeting with Tom here, is I guess if, if there's a desire by this board to explore further increasing the cap on senior housing, I'm not suggesting necessarily eliminating it, but if we've hit that threshold and no more senior housing can really be built under it, does the board have an interest in, you know, exploring or supporting at a future town meeting the ability to increase it so we could open up more opportunities for additional senior housing? You know what we might want to do is have Karina come to one of our meetings. Okay. Yeah. Good because idea. she would really be speaking much more intelligently than I am on this matter. And it could could directly, you know, help us in terms of crafting, you know. A motion to uh, support uh, a zoning change. That's a great idea. So it's just a matter of you know coordinating that, Doug. What you and I can kind of work on that. Okay. Okay. Great for another meeting. 
No, I think it's great because I think those are the two ones that Tom had referenced and we've talked about, which is, you know, senior housing cap and then just how are ADUs ADUs working and, you know, is there an opportunity there to increase some housing stock? Um, so, okay, that's great. Okay. Um, next, next thing is just an update uh, from Paul and I just on the, the working group. So I think, Paul, we've had two meetings, I think, at this point for this the potential consolidation of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund with Shopsy. Um, I think it's been two. I think we have a third coming up tomorrow. Um, so, Paul, I don't know if you want to give the update. I'm more than happy to have you give your thoughts first. I can provide my thoughts after or um, either works. Um, well, I missed the last meeting, so you might be better. No. <laughs> I was away, but... <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah. so I'm going to give you, give you guys the, the high level update basically is that, so they're, they're definitely, you know, um, the group is made of uh, Andrew Dennington, um, Lisa Bracchio, Paul, and myself. Um, and I think, Al. you know, Al, sorry, Al, <laughs> my bad. Um, so uh, Al, I don't know if you want to give the update, you can too, but I'll, I'll, I'll start and you guys can correct me, sure. but um, I think the, the goal here is to get the selectmen basically out of the affordable housing trust fund, right? There will still be one member, but basically to merge the two boards basically. But but the idea is that rather than having being five selectmen on the affordable housing trust fund, that it'd be one selectman and then four members at large of which the preference but not requirement would be that two of them have experience in affordable housing, social services, um, or real estate development. Um, and, and then basically Shopsy would be discontinued as a board. And so that the affordable housing trust fund would basically have, you know, both roles. Um, but again, it would be more of a, you know, a five person board with only one board of selectmen. And I think that's how it's being written up currently. And I'll pause there to Al to see if I missed any kind of highlights or paw, but that's, that's where I think it is currently. Yeah, that's the you you've summarized it. it you know, yeah, the, there's there's draft language which has been circulated, and um, you know, it, it turned out to be a bit messier in the in the legislation than was desired. But um, I think we've we've got a a path through to to do that. So yeah, I think we're going to talk about the draft legislation and or draft wording and then uh, see if. Uh, there's any any changes uh, it would be very very desirable to come to an agreement friday uh on what the draft language should be because uh basically the warrant goes to the printer on tuesday we can always if necessary say you know hand out a, a, a sheet that says <clears throat> has printed in this sheet rather than as is printed in the green sheet rather than in, in the warrant but it'd be desirable to have it in the warrant and, you know, again, I think we talked a little bit last time, but, you know, at least my I can put my thoughts out there. I mean, obviously, I think as a Shopsy member for the last two years, we clearly have talked about how we're more advisory and, you know, the ability for us to really do an affordable housing transaction is pretty difficult, right, in terms of the need to go to at least two different boards to try to do that. In some ways, I'm definitely in favor of, you know, merging the two boards because I think it just allows, you know, the town to be a bit more nimble uh, with the one board in terms of trying to move it forward. Um, you know, those are kind of my initial thoughts. Um, but um, but anyways, open it to other discussion or comments or questions, too, as well. So I, I can assure you that four members of the select board are very interested in no longer being part of the affordable housing trust fund, just because yeah, the reality is, is they all have an all of us have a lot on our plates and I think having uh, a team that is dedicated and focused on this and, you know, deploy the funds um, and actually make things happen is, yeah, I'm, I'm all in favor of doing this. Yeah. It makes sense to me. I mean, I don't think the function of Shopsy will go away at all. <clears throat> Probably be improved. Um and like you said, it'll just make it easier to get things done. So makes sense to me. So for, I, I am curious, though, about the 
at large component. Uh, it was one select board member and four at large. That's so, correct. Right? Yeah. I, I just would recommend that in, you go with three at large and one planning and one select board. Because plan you're gonna need the resources of the planning department and the the knowledge on zoning um to function. So I I don't I, I would strongly recommend reconsidering the makeup of the board. What okay. about a, if you had an ex officio member from the planning, you know, the town planning department, would that work? Actually, uh, I don't think so because you really need you need an elected official. I mean, the the planner, the town planner, or or an administrator within the planning department um, is going to have to, you know, we'll go back to the. The planning board for guidance and, and I, I just don't see how that maybe i'm missing your idea well so there's 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 two ways to skin that cat um and, and, uh one uh you know one of the at-large seats could be a member of the planning board and i i think that would actually be one way of doing it a second way would be to place um place that as you know one of the suggested require uh of the two seats that are supposed to have expertise you know we just play ad planning and you know I, I think that's a discussion we're gonna I know Lisa's gonna be there um you know I think the I, I won't won't characterize this the select board's view because I don't think I've formally done that that um but I'll make sure it gets to talk about in uh tomorrow. Thank you. To Paul, did, and if did, I forget, did, these two guys will remember. Yeah, Paul, did I did I miss your point maybe? Or I want to make sure. Well, I think it's a different point. I mean, we had in our meetings, we would we were talking about what kind of resources we would need or want on the town side. And that's <laughs> kind of where I was coming from. And by ex officio, you probably you're. I assume you're referring to the town planner herself. I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. So the one thing I will say is, um, just being on this board where we do not have a direct staff person, and you know, I know Dorian did this for many years, but having to do your own meeting visit meeting minutes and not having staff support, I'm a strong favor of making sure we have a staff person assigned. You know. Um, but Al, does the Affordable Housing Trust Fund already have a staff person assigned? I'm no. just more curious. Yeah. No. So no, they're there. The the uh, uh the, the the policy is that only elected boards have minute takers. And believe me, I've been done done minutes for for decades, and uh, I hate it with a burning passion. And um, you know, it, it, and 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 you can only get me on a soapbox here you know because i i know people that refuse to serve because of minutes and well well i will say i did um i did use an ai assistant to listen to our last um shop meeting and it did take it first of all it fully transcribed everything um um and um, which was very cool it also did a summary i have yet to translate that into meeting minutes but i'm just letting you know um and um, that was actually, it was, it was, it was pretty cool. Although my wife was wondering why she was hearing voices in the basement for 45 minutes, but that's a different story. <laughs> uh, you know, if, if that works, uh, I would, I would uh, have, have a conversation with Jim Haggerty. You know, I mean, we need yeah. tools because yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're still, the, the state is still in the, the quill and I quill pen and eye shade. Uh, world and, and the legal profession, as you know, is in the quill pen and eye shade world. And um, if that works, that that would you would make an awful lot of people happy. Yeah, no, and I'll definitely I'll bring it up. And again, I'll see how I mean, this the one I use is called otter.ai. And you actually can invite it to a Zoom meeting. I did not do it here. Right. And I've seen some in the business now where I am that people, you know, have, you know, this AI assistant literally transcribing meetings. I thought we record much meetings in the private world, right? Because everyone freaks out on that. But, um, um, but 
I will, I will get you those meeting minutes and then I will, I will give, I'll talk yeah. to Jim about this too. Cause it could be, you know, a lot of boards and committees are doing their own. It could be a, it could be a huge time savings and there's already a fully recorded version of this. So it might just be a better way to save volunteers time, you know, with everything going on. Thank Actually, you. if you wanted to come and have a conversation with the select board about this as, as sort of a, you know, I think, uh, getting a few people who know what they're doing, uh, the municipal technology committee would probably be a great, great resource to sort of find a tool for everybody to do because nobody likes minutes. Yeah. It, it could be a much more simplistic way. And again, it's also just, it, it records everything, but then it also does a, a summary, but then it, it, the summary is much easier to work with um, at that point, right. To clean it up and, you know, put the right speaker names on each section. So anyways, but um. <laughs> So on this, I guess the question is, does the board have any appetite to, because we're not going to probably meet before town meeting, does the board want to make a motion or suggest support for merging of the two committees? Not necessarily, I mean, we can also state with, you know, with consideration for the membership, um, but I just, I asked that out loud, given that we probably will not be meeting again as a board before town meeting. Uh. I, I'll, I'll make a motion and then we can discuss it. So I'll, I'll move that Shopsy uh, recommend to town meeting that the Shopsy and the Affordable Housing Trust Fund be merged. Second. All right. So uh, uh, the discussion wait, will just... be, yeah, the discussion will be, I, I think I'm going to abstain because of, I, I think that I'm not, um, just not on the same page as far as the, uh, the, the makeup of the proposed new board. Uh, but in principle, I certainly understand, you know, I'm not, I'm not completely against the, uh, the, the concept, but um, not having a, a set planning board member uh, is not something that I can get behind. So I will abstain. Okay. Um, I actually had Grant uh, Farrington is raising his hand. If you guys are okay, I'm going to let him speak. Sure. Absolutely. Grant, you should be able to speak. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. How are you? Good. Um, yeah, just one thing I'd know. Uh, what a lot of committees do actually is for town meeting, if all of you are planning on being there, um, is to schedule a meeting like, I don't know, 15 minutes or half an hour before uh, town meeting itself. So, you know, if some of these details aren't worked out yet and you don't feel comfortable taking a vote yet, you could, you know, wait until kind of town meeting right before town meeting, have a quick meeting to, you know, voice your support one way or the other. And then that way you'll have kind of all the information going into, um, you know, the, you know, the final uh, kind of town meeting um, set up. So just thought I'd mention that as a, as a, another option. Thanks. Grant, as, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, I'll be with uh, Debbie and the rest of my planning board members in a session before the town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I will as well in in the select board, but I, you, you, three people is, is a quorum, so. Yeah, I was gonna suggest the same thing. I mean, even if, I mean, if we post a meeting and even if we just huddle <laughs> at some point on the floor before town meeting, you know, and if, if we address Jesse's concern, maybe he, you know what I mean? So we just take another vote if we need to. I can certainly talk out to, to vote, so. Okay, so I mean, I mean, I'm on board with that too. So I could definitely post the meeting. Um, I think it's still good that we, I mean, you know, vote tonight. Um, noting Jesse's, you know, um, you know, concerns around the makeup, which we're going to talk about tomorrow too. But I do think it's still good to, you know, for the town to know that Shopsy supports the merging of the boards. You know, with Jeff Jesse's, you know, concerns around just membership, and I think we can further work on that. So, yep. um, okay. All right, so I'll take a roll call. Um, so, um, Paul? Aye. Uh, Jesse? Abstain. Al? Aye. And Doug is aye. Okay, great. So I will um, make sure I post a meeting for that. And then, um, Jesse, we are meeting tomorrow again. So we'll definitely discuss the makeup composition and, you know, we'll, we'll keep you posted as we go through that. Yep, and we'll see you guys at town meeting. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. 
So uh, last item on the agenda, well, besides essentially scheduling another meeting, um, is the discussion of potential use of affordable housing trust funds uh, to buy down affordable rental payments on, say, a Chapter 40B project. I think that was relation to it. So I think, Al, this is your item. So I will turn the floor over to you. Um, but I think this is one of the agenda items. Sure. So um, I think I sent out some information that... Uh, that was based on what was done in public session and, and there has been no meaningful movement since but that is one of the permitted uses of the affordable housing trust fund so that you, we could go to one of the 40 b's and say you know for a sum of money we would like instead of the uh, affordable units being at 80 percent of market rate that they would be at 70 or 60 percent um it's 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 obviously a, a negotiation at some point, but that is a uh, a viable use and it's pretty good leverage. You know, the at eighty percent, you know, we're still talking about uh, non-trivial rents, and uh, you know that might uh, open up affordability to more people. You know, the uh, particularly you know work what what. The folks who, who are do, doing 120 are, are talking, calling uh, uh, workers housing, you know, people who are, you know, uh, carpenters or, or or maintenance people, you know, this is, this is not Section 8 housing, this is housing for, for, for working families you know, or, and or people just getting started, starting out. So that is an, an option, uh, you know, I, I had a chat with Kat Miller, you know, thanks to Doug setting that up, and you know, she confirmed that that is a, a a viable option. So I think that is one of the things. There's there's nothing there's nothing percolating at the moment, but uh, I think that is something. Yeah, as I said, I had a brief conversation with uh, the. Doug Ferris, uh, just because I said, you know, well, would you be interested in something along those lines? And and we haven't moved things any further than that. You know, it, I think he probably wants to get uh, things nailed down a little more before he would uh, open up on that. And then that would be a negotiation. I know Paul had asked questions about that, so I, hopefully that that answers them. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea in principle, I guess, but. I, I think Sam Stivers had asked a question that you're at the select board, or I guess it was the Affordable Housing House Fund meeting where you brought this up. And, and it's like, what's the incentive for the developer to go along with this? Uh, because, I mean, as, as you explained it, it would be in perpetuity. So whatever discount you get applies forever. And, you know, verse, and it's going to wind up costing them more money than whatever it is we give them. Well, we had said it well to be a good PR move for him, which yeah, but I, I don't know. It, we, it'll be an interesting negotiation, put it that way. Yeah, uh, the sum of money is not trivial. Yeah, uh, I I did a I, I sat down with a spreadsheet, and you know, I, I don't want to talk about dollars, but it's it's bigger than a bread basket. You know, it, you know. Uh, you you got you know some idea about what you know one of those units probably costs to build and you're gonna end up paying you know for a chunk of that and you know the 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 advantage to the developer is that you know it's it's a non-trivial sum of money now which means you know the, the, they're they're borrowing less they're, okay. they're you know the cash is last time I checked was still pretty good and we do have cash so yeah this may not work out. I don't know, you know, but if you don't, if you don't try, you'll never get anything anywhere. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, so look, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, I mean, I think the discussion of all options is a great way of looking at it. Right. Um, you know, we, I've done development where we have 25% affordable housing units uh, in our buildings, right. Or 20% or 13%. So I've done chapter 40 B projects and, and, you know, inclusionary housing projects in Boston. Um, you know, um, so I appreciate the discussion of it. I mean, I think part of my mindset is I'd be a, maybe a bit more interested in 
you know, if the developer was willing to increase the percentage of affordable units, right? In other words, have one or two more units and, you know, we would provide some funds, you know, that could be interesting too as well versus, you know, paying mm -hmm. down the rents a little bit. That's another option. Um, I do think when we had Metro West Collaborative on, you know, a couple of meetings ago, um, it was definitely very interesting to hear that, you know, outside of land, they do need about twenty to 25000 per unit, right, to, you know, bridge the gap financing. And so I think that also is important. So it's like you said, Al, I think it's it's really understanding the opportunities and what comes along. Um, I do think it's good to not sit on cash waiting for the perfect scenario, right? So if some scenarios come up and there's an opportunity to buy down stuff, right? And that's more sooner, that's great. So um, it's just interesting. But I'm, my old goal is always trying to think of how do we get more units created? That, you know, that's, that's kind of my first initial reaction. But I'm definitely open to all ideas, that's for sure. Oh, Jesse, any thoughts on that topic? I, I think I would just need a little bit more information. I mean, to me, the affordable housing trust funds are for the acquisition of property and um, I don't, this is not a concept that's really, um, clear to me right now. So I would be, um, holding off until yeah. I knew a little bit more. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. It, it is actually one of the identified of, of the 16 powers that an affordable housing trust has. It is one of the identified uses, you know, to reduce <laughs> rents or to, you know, make make uh, the purchase of of housing uh, more affordable. So it it is definitely a thing that can be done. Whether we should do it is, of course, another matter. Yeah. Al, actually, curious when you talk with mass housing, because um, it's always I, first. I love precedents, right? And it's like yeah. great, it was great to have Metro West Collaborative in and understand how they do it. That was, I mean, I think that one of the goals is maybe get a different group into as well. Yeah. Um, but. But I'm curious, did mass housing have any good examples where this was done? I mean, I'd be interesting to know if, you know, if other towns have done it and how they have negotiated or what they've come up with, because that could be interesting to understand, too, because uh, I do know definitely in Cambridge and Boston, they are not simply doing, um, you know, 80 percent median income. You know, they're actually doing a range now where they do a range of like 60 to 100%, or sometimes they even require lower, like a 60 to 80% range, because to your point, Al, they're still pretty high. But I'd be curious if Mass Housing actually has some examples of this, which could be helpful for us to evaluate and understand. Well, I will send Kat Miller an email and ask. Doug, have you ever been involved in anything with uh, down payment assistance? Not to go too far stray from agenda, but... You know, CPA, it's like something I see at work all the time in the mortgage you business. Know, you know, it's actually interesting because I do know the city of Boston has done this. So, again, it's actually, it's actually a great point, Jesse, because when we talk about maybe doing an affordable housing development, it doesn't need to be for rent. Right. I mean, there could be it can be affordable townhome unit that's for sale. Um, and I do know that some nonprofits have done down payment assistance. Right. Um, to encourage it, right, to bridge the gap, um, because that's the other impediment, right? Um, even though the the for sale townhome is at an affordable home ownership and they can actually afford the monthly mortgage payments, they cannot come up with the 5% down payment because it's still a pretty, you know, it's like, you know, thousands of dollars. So that's actually, Al, it might be something else to ask too when you talk to mass housing of have towns used it for down payment assistance on affordable units. I'd be curious yeah. too, because that's another great comment. Is that within the purview, Al? Uh, yes, I believe it is. It's it's very broad. Um, and in fact, uh, I, I think that that is, I, I'll double check, but I, I think that is within in the purview. Here's There is a, a caveat, though. Particularly, it, it, we are constrained in that, um, given that the source of most of the money is going to be the CPA, there are also a set of CPA requirements related to affordable housing, which I believe include, uh, particularly for purchased housing, a uh, permanent deed restriction, a permanent affordable deed restriction. So, you know, it's not like you can say, you know, 
will help you pay make your 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 down down payment. You know, the property ha itself has to be permanently uh, deeded as affordable. Yeah, I mean that that's that is normal and typical yep. though, Al. Like yeah. down payment assistance that it that it's on affordable housing. That's on deed restricted. Yeah. 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 I, I believe that that is a uh it, it is within it it's it's a very broad mandate. You know, the broader than you know, the, the 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 committee, the affordable housing trust fund has actually got a tremendous amount of authority. And in fact, you know, I asked uh, town council whether you know we could um actually you know put a constraint on it so that, you know if they wanted to spend a certain amount of money or acquire property whether you know the select board had to you know approve it and he said no the 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 committee has has very very broad authority you know it's just i think they're just saying you know get out of the way and get the job done yeah, the other thing too, I think I believe this is the case, but I don't want to misspeak. But you know, an affordable resident who owns the townhome, when they sell it, they obviously have to sell it at an income restriction, right? But there is still some value creation or wealth accumulation, um, and that's actually a good thing too for you know raising families up. It may have still capped because it's got to be yeah. at the new eighty percent. But if someone's been there for ten years, you know, um, and I'm trying to think, Jesse, I mean. I think some places actually recapture the down payment assistant too upon a sale, right? Um, you know, but oh, I don't, it varies, it varies greatly because the idea is it's more about reducing the barriers. It's not meant to be a windfall, right? It's not meant to be a grant sometimes, but I think it varies by community. But that might be something else too that as we dig in, this could be interesting to find out. But um, yeah, but the, I, um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm familiar with how it works at Habitat where, you know, uh, the, owner of a habitat unit which is an affordable unit get yeah, there's sort of a, a schedule for their equity and with and with modest gains but at, at the end of the day you know you're not going to live in an affordable unit for 10 or 20 years and then um sell it at a, at a huge profit but on the other hand you will have had quality shelter in a nice community where you could send your kids to school and that that's actually pretty valuable. All right. Well, I think that is everything on the agenda. Um, I do think it'd be probably good to schedule another meeting. But as I say this, it might be, I mean, you know, obviously town meeting is coming up, so that might change things a little bit for Shopsy. Um, um, so... I think we probably wouldn't meet till October anyways. And I think it would be good to, um, you know, get our town planner at the next meeting. I think Jesse, that was a great suggestion. So um, I don't know if people want to pick kind of a tentative date. So we have a placeholder and then maybe Jesse and I can coordinate, um, you know, with the town planner on trying to make that meeting. But um, just looking at the calendar, I could probably do the 10th or the 17th of October, just looking at kind of five weeks away. But I just, what, what are people's preferences? Yeah, well, fine with me. Yeah, I, so, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it during the day, too. I don't well, know. Well, I was going to say, if we want to have Karina on, we might want to think about like a, okay. an 8.30 a.m. start. I don't know if that works for you guys, but. I can, I can, so Thursdays, I'm actually, Thursdays and Fridays in the morning work very well for me because I'm, I'm, I'm remote, not in Boston those days. So um, I'm definitely good with an 830 meeting on either of those days. <laughs> me too. And, okay. uh, as I understand the process, even if town meeting votes, uh, the articles still have to be reviewed and approved by the AG. So okay. they will take into, take effect until Till then, I'll, I'll double check that, but that's my understanding. That this one would be pretty simple. But in any event, it, it when it does uh, when it does take effect, you know, I, I think the select board will have have a a new uh, affordable housing trust fund in the wings. Or, or, excuse me, a new yep. board. Of, it's really a new board of trustees of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. I have to keep saying that the right way uh, in the wings so that they, they would they'll essentially be, you know, a, a quick switch. Yeah. Well, then, I think we're celebrating think... by the select board. who <laughs> One less meeting they have to go to. 
Well, I think, look, I think it's great to continue to pursue all these items that we've discussed, because I think, it, you know, if the, the boards do merge, I think this is what the, you know, the merge board will carry on with. And again, removing barriers, I think is a really important thing. So um, is there a preference? Is there, I mean, is Thursday mornings better than Friday? More just for guidance for Jesse and I as we reach out, um, you know, I could do either, but I'm just curious if Thursdays or Fridays uh, are better. I think I Thursday is Thursday. Better. Yeah, if we're gonna have Karina in uh, Friday is not optimal. So I would, okay. Doug. Maybe we can like um, just throw the seventeenth. Yep. I'll even just I'll even speak with Karina like tomorrow. Okay. See if that works. Uh, All right, so I'll, yeah. Uh, sorry, I was just gonna say as a plan B, I guess the tenth. Uh, uh, Paul and Al, are you guys also available on the tenth yeah. and the seventeenth? Yep. Okay. Okay. I can actually just let you know doug so. yeah let me know and then i will post the meeting um and um and then obviously i'll make this one of the agenda items let me know you guys can let me know by email if there's any other agenda items that you guys would like um i'll probably keep the mbta communities act on the agenda right because i'm sure that'll be an ongoing might be good just to recap what after town meeting um and then Al, you're going to report back hopefully on 61A parcels, um, yeah. and um, and I think that'll be the 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 bulk of it. And but if you guys have anything else, let me know, and I'll get it on the agenda. So, um, well, Doug, are we also going to post for prior to town meeting? Yes, I will post to prior to town meeting, and I'm going to double check to make sure we are posted. Um, for the next planning board hearing, which I believe we are, but just in case I will uh, double check, um, given I think at least all well, four of us will likely be there. Um, so I believe I already did post that, but I will check that quick. Um, That's Monday the 9th. Yeah, so which actually is gonna be less than 48 hours. So I'm gonna get yelled at um, at this point if it's not posted. Um, so I will, I think I did post it, but I'm gonna double check. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you get you get yelled at. Yeah. All right. I think that All was right. it. Um right. do you have a motion to close the meeting? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor, Paul? Aye. Jesse? Aye. Al? Aye. And Doug is aye. Well, thank you everyone. Really appreciate it. Um have thank a you. great evening. Good night. Nice, Doug. Nice job. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.